I met Harry in uh, 1978. I was in the studio. He was making a record in another studio, and he came smiling up to me and started talking to me. And 20 minutes went by. 30 minutes went by. <laughs> Talked about everything, politics, music. I said, ah, he's a nice guy. I went. Next night I came in. Harry comes bounding up, smiling again. He starts talking to me. 30 minutes goes by. <laughs> So finally, I used to try to hide from him. Uh, I'd come in and I'd ask the secretary if Harry was in the lobby. You know, and I'd sneak in the studio. So we went out to California to mix, and I'm standing on this balcony, third floor of this motel, and I hear, hey, hey. And I look down, and there's Harry. <laughs> and he starts talking to me. He talks to me for about 40 minutes standing down there looking up. He was trying to get me to do something, you know. And he said one thing that I always remembered, he said, gee, you know, I play one night for me and one night for the other guy. And later on when I was trying to put my music to some pragmatic use, I remembered what he said. And not being bent to extremism, I wasn't as generous as he was. But <laughs> well, he's probably laughing, laughing right now, anyway. Remember when music came from wooden boxes strung with silver wire? And as we sang, the words would set our hearts on fire to believe in things. And so we'd sing. Remember when the music brought us all together to stand inside the ring. And as we joined hands, we'd meet in the refrain with dreams to live and hope to give. Remember when the music was the best or what we dreamed of for our children's time. And as we worked, we sang because we knew time was just a line. Gift to save, gift the future to give. Remember when the music was a rock that we could cling to so we'd not despair. And as we sang, we knew we'd hear an echo in the air. And if we weren't smiling, we'd smile again. Yeah, and all the times I listened, and all the times I heard, and all the melodies I missed. And all the magic words, all the beautiful voices, and the choices we had then. I hope to find we got those kinds of choices once again. I remember when Sandy sent me this tape, I listened to it and I said, gee, this is a little on the corny side. And I sat down and I tried to think, what the song was about. And I guess there was a time when people felt that music provided you with a greater, oh, a greater sense of unity, a greater sense of shared vision and purpose than it does today. In my generation, we were the generation that was gonna change the world. Uh, somehow we were gonna make it a little less lonely a little less hungry, a little more just place. But it seems that when, when that promise slipped through our hands, we didn't replace it with nothing but, but lost faith. And now we live in, uh, times are pretty shattered. I got my music, you got yours. The guy up the street, he's got his. And you could kind of sit back and say, not cynically, but truthfully, well, maybe, maybe all men are not brothers. And maybe we won't ever know who or what we really are to each other. But I think Harry instinctively knew that it was gonna take a lot more than just love to survive. That it was gonna take a strong sense of purpose, a duty, 
and a good clear eye on the dirty ways of the world. So in keeping, in keeping his promise to himself, he reminds us of our promise to ourselves. And that tonight, alongside Harry, it's that promise that his spirit would have us remember and honor and recommit to. So do something and may his song be sung. Remember when the music was a glow on the horizon of the newborn day. And as we sang, the sun come up and chased the dark away. And life was good, for we knew we could. Remember when the music brought the night across the valley as the day went down. And as we hum the melody, we'd be safe inside the sound. And so we'd sleep to awake with dreams and promises to keep. 